In the previous video, we talked about the third step of animal development, which is gastrulation. In this video, we will talk about the fourth and final step, organogenesis. Specifically, we will talk about what organogenesis is and what occurs during this process. Go through the differences in organogenesis for different species, such as chicks, which are vertebrates, and insects, which are invertebrates. And lastly, we'll go through morphogenesis, what it is, and how it works. Organogenesis is the formation of organs using the three embryonic germ layers, which are the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm. A big portion of organogenesis includes localized shape changes in tissue and cells. The first part of organogenesis can be seen in the tissue folds, splits, and dense cluttering of cells. The first organs to take shape are the brain and the spinal cord, and this process is known as neurulation, which transforms gastrula into neurula. Neurulation starts with the formation of the notochord, and the notochord is a rod extending on the dorsal side of the embryo, which is seen right here. Again, this is not drawn to scale, but the dorsal side is the back side of the embryo, so you'll see this rod forming there. The notochord, along with other mesodermal cells, then release signaling molecules, which cause the ectoderm cells sitting above the notochord to produce the neuroplate, which is seen here. Parts of the notochord become part of the vertebrate discs. And it is important to note that eventually, the notochord will not be present anymore, which occurs before birth. Changes in cell, cell shape cause the neural plate to curve inward, which will then curve into the neural tube. As seen right here, here's the neural tube, and the plate curves inward into that. And the neural tube is the precursor to the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord, and it runs along the anterior-posterior axis of the embryo. On top of that, you have neural crest cells, which migrate to various parts of the embryo. Because of this migration, they form peripheral nerves, certain parts of teeth, skull bones, and many other cell types. Mesoderm cells lateral to the notochord separate into blocks called somites, which is seen right here. So you have these somites on both sides, and these cells convert to mesenchyme cells, which are migratory cells, and will move to new locations. Because of this conversion, somites are made up of both mesoderm and mesochyme cells. Somite cells that become mesenchyme cells form the muscles associated with vertebral column and ribs. And next we will move on to organogenesis in a chick. Organogenesis in a chick is very similar to that of a frog. After the three germ layers are formed, the borders of the blastoderm fold downward and come together, pinching the embryo into a three-layer tube, as seen right here. Neural tube formation, development of the somites and notochord, and some other events during organogenesis occur very similarly in the frog embryo. And after two to three days, the major organs can be seen in the chick embryo. Now in regards to invertebrates, due to their different body, organogenesis is different. For example, in flies and other insects, tissues of the nervous system form when ectoderm on the anterior-posterior axis of the organism rolls into a neural tube inside the embryo. Interestingly, the tube is on the ventral side of the embryo rather than the dorsal side. So again, uh, this picture is not drawn to scale, it just helps me better memorize. So in invertebrates, the neural tube is formed on the ventral side or near the stomach, while in vertebrates, as we've talked about before, the neural tube forms on the dorsal side or towards the back. And the mechanism of organogenesis is the same between vertebrates and invertebrates regarding cellular activities, which includes cell migration, cell condensation, cell signaling, and cell shape. Morphogenesis is the development of body shape and organization, and is a major aspect in animals. In animals, morphogenesis involves the movement of cells and can bring about changes in cell shape or allow a cell to migrate throughout the embryo. Microtubules and microfilaments are very important to allow this change in cell shape or migration. Changes in the shape of a cell involve reorganization of the cytoskeleton. To show an example of this, we are going to look at the diagram here, which shows how cells in the neural plate form the neural tube. So as seen in this diagram, in the first picture, there is a continuous sheet of ectoderm cells, which again, this is the neural plate. If you look to the right, you have these black lines within these cells this is a focused in picture of the cell. And within these, this, you have the black lines which uh, represent the actin filaments and the microtubules, and the red dot represent the nucleus. Right? And again, all you're seeing here is that there's a continuous sheet of ectoderm cells. 
And now we move down to the next picture, you're going to see that in the close-up that the cells have elongated with microtubules. So the microtubules are here, actin filaments are up top. And what happens is the microtubules have extended or gotten longer, and because of this, the cell in whole has gotten longer. And now in the third picture, you're going to see actin filaments on the dorsal side of the organism contracts, causing the cells to wedge. So again, the actin filaments, which are seen here, they're contracting or getting smaller. And because of that, it's causing the top of the cell to contract, and it causes these cells to what it's known as wedging. And finally, we have cell wedging in the opposite direction causes the ectoderm to hinge, pinching the cells. So again, as these actin filaments contract further, uh, it's going to push the bottom or the base of the cell out further, uh, causing more of a hinge, and this causes the cells to pinch. In sea urchins and frogs, there is a cell crawling process known as convergent extension, which is a type of morphogenetic movement in which cells of a tissue rearrange so that they become narrower and longer, such as the diagram seen below. So right here, you see that these cells elongate and wedge between one another. And what I mean by that is, you see in the first process, the cells are in a square shape. And when you move to the next process, you see they elongated, which is represented by a rectangular shape. And in the final process, you see that they've wedged between each other or they've gone in between each other. And I've shown this using different colors. So as you see here, the blue on the bottom, the red on top. What happens is this first blue will wedge between the first and second red cell and so on and so forth. So the second will merge between the second and the third red cell and then the third blue cell will go to the end. So before we go, I just want to say thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave any questions in the comments in regards to this video or any videos you guys would like to see in the future. Thank you.